Welcome to Papa's Workshop. Today I'm helping out my son. He's a big gamer in the Warhammer world. And one of the things that you have to be able to do when you're playing that game is track the wounds of the individual pieces of the game. Now I really don't know much about the game, but he designed this game piece in the Warhammer to be able to track the wounds of the game pieces so you can actually move the numbers and it's held together with the rare earth magnets. To the day I want to be able to show you how he designed it and how I made it using the X-Carve and the laser. Let's get started. This project began with multiple files done in AutoCAD. From there, it was saved as a DXF file and brought into Easel, and other parts went through Inkscape to Lightburn. I opened the DXF file directly into Easel and was able to center the project and set it up to be able to do the carving. The only step in easel is the actual cutting out of the circle itself. The rest of it is all done with the laser. Now to prepare this, I'm using the Starbond thick glue to be able to hold this eighth inch plywood down. And I'm using my glue and tape method to be able to do that. And also I'm going to put a link down in the description so that you can get a 15% discount on buying the Starbond glue. This is a great hold down method. Now the only thing that I'm doing here is just holding down where the two parts will be cut out. Once this is done, I'm gonna lift off the rest of the plywood, leaving only the disc in place with the glue and the tape method. Now I'm using a 16th of an inch upcut bit to do the carving, and this only takes just a couple minutes to complete the carving. Now that the carving is done, I'm closing easel completely and opening up Lightburn. The file that I'm bringing into Lightburn first is the one with the numbers. That is the first part that gets engraved onto the disc. Now this is a small object, so I just click on the little tab above and bring it up so that I can see the numbers. Now I'm doing this as a fill with 70 inches per minute and 100% power. Now I decided before moving on that I was going to change that to 60 inches per minute and that would make it just a little bit darker. Now I'm doing this engraving with the 60 inches per minute with 100% power and it is doing this in one pass. This is the only way that I can really do these types of very, very small letters. I could not be successful doing this on the X-Carve, even with a 32nd inch bit. So the laser is definitely the way to go. So the numbers are now finished and they look really good. Doing the 60 inches per minute with 100% power turned out really good. Now the next part, the logo, the logo will actually go on the other side of this. Two different logos were created to be able to put on the face of this tracker. This was the first logo that we've tested out and engraving it now. And it's actually looking quite good. This logo was centered manually and you can tell it's actually looking pretty good. Now we're going to go ahead and test out the second logo with the text on it also. Now this logo was created with the text on the circle and I have two different layers here. The black layer is to be able to get the alignment correct and that is not going to carve. You can see the black down here is not showing the output. The only output is going to be the blue lines. Now the next problem that you see is the little logo in the center. When I do this and show it, it is just a single line. If I carve it that way, it would be a very, very thin line that you would hardly see. So I changed that to a third layer, which was red, 
and I made that as a fill. So that is set for 70% or 70 inches per minute with 100% power and that will fill that portion of the logo in and that will make the look that I'm trying to achieve. So now I have three layers total, two of which are actually going to engrave. A quick look at just how good this tape and glue method holds down the material. I can use my center finder and go ahead and find the center of this and that will help and make it a whole lot easier. So that's the center of the circle and that's where I'll place the laser to be able to have the proper alignment to put the logo on. Now I want to make sure that this surface is flat and I can just set that right back down here and that's really all that's necessary with the laser. I don't need to glue this. So let me go ahead and position the laser right over the center point and I'm going to bring up the next logo so that we can do this engraving. I know this may be difficult to be able to see in the camera, but I have the little laser dot directly on my X marking the center. So now I'm actually ready to go ahead and do the engraving. Now before I actually do the engraving, there's a couple things I need to be able to change. Right now, this is showing where the letters themselves are cutting the line and the red portion is doing the fill. I want to combine all this together and now you can see it right here. The red is set for fill and I'm going to combine that over with the blue and I'm also setting the blue to be a fill also. This is an important step that will save quite a bit of time and you can see the actual engraving now where it's doing this process all at one time where the letters are engraving and the logo is engraving and that saves a big step. Now as far as the speed, I am doing this at 60 inches a minute with the full power and I'm doing this with one pass. While this is engraving, I do want to remind you, please hit the subscribe button and the little bell next to it so that you'll be notified and won't miss out on any of my videos. Assembly of the tracker is actually very easy. We have a rare earth magnet that just goes into the center and that is glued in using the thick Starbond glue as well. Now to be able to make sure that the polarity is correct with the different magnets, we set up and test it first before gluing it in. Believe it or not, yes I have put these in backwards and it's no fun at all. But we test it one more time just to make sure and then we slip in the rare earth magnet. And that's really all there is to the assembly. Once the glue is dry, then we can put the two pieces together and they will rotate just perfectly and that's what we want to be able to have happen. And now you can see how it spins and it shows the different numbers. Perfect. Hi everyone, thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.